think of it as the Stanley Cup of amateur hockey. For goalie Carey Price, last December's World Juniors in Sweden were the crowning achievement in a still very young career. And one more step towards the real prize. My goal is to play in Montreal one day. and I got a long ways to go and my work's only halfway done. And that's that's going to be the toughest part is I've I got to regroup and stay focused. I can't just rely on what I've done so far. I got a lot of long ways to go. Ken Dryden knows all about that. They recently retired his number. That's how good he was. At 23, Dryden was given the same chance Kerry may now get. There is that line that passes. And in Montreal, from Georges Vezina to and, and George Hainsworth to Bill Dernan to Jacques Plante, and then I guess I was next, and then, and then Patrick Waugh. Um, that's a pretty nice tradition to be a part of. More than nice, actually. It's as close as you can get to hockey royalty. So is Carey's blood blue enough? He is the most successful junior goalie in the country and perhaps in the world right now. So. He's well positioned. He's better positioned than anybody else is to live up to the expectations and, and the hopes in Montreal. Get to the net! And while fame and fortune may be on their way, they haven't arrived yet. Kerry's still playing junior hockey, still grinding it out for the Tri-City Americans of the Western Hockey League. Rebound! His coach, Don Knackbauer, agrees Rebound. with Ken Dryden. There is something special about this kid. Very rarely gets rattled. I can't think of time in my, that I've had him where he's uh, gone nuts in the, in the crease and gone ballistic like some of the goaltenders that I've played with in pro, but what separates him between most goaltenders is the way he thinks the game and he's solid in his mind. I have noticed that about you. You don't seem to show a lot of emotion. Are you just not emotional or you do a good job of keeping it inside? I'm pretty emotional. I just don't like to show it, especially in the hockey rink. Um, as little emotion shown in the hockey rink, I think it's the better. If you show that you're upset, the other team can use that. If you show that you're, you're overly happy, the other team can use that too as motivation. It's one of the great positions of where you're part of a team and you're also doing something fairly individual at times. You're in the middle of the action, and you're also separate from the action. The position is definitely unique. I mean, you're the only person who makes a mistake, and a red light goes off above your head, and everybody starts screaming. What are you looking at, though? Are you looking at the stick? Are you looking at the puck? Are you looking at the shooter's eyes? It's a combination of everything. You try to get a read from his body positioning, where he's handling the puck, where he keeps the puck. In, behind his body, like beside him or in front of him, is he going to deke or is he going to shoot? You just try and and read all those little things that might get a, you might get a clue. Life in the juniors is a life away from home. I ordered a razor and some shaving cream to my room. And for most of the kids, that's the toughest part of the game. We get the kids at 16 years old, and uh, for the most part, uh, most of them have never been away from home, so they experience uh, homesickness. They go through phases where they miss their friends. But Carrie, like other junior players, has been doing it for years. In Pasco, Washington, his home for the past three years, he lives with Jill and Dennis Williams, both of them huge fans who understand what the kids have to go through. Well, I think they miss out on a lot. I think they, they do sacrifice a lot. They don't have a normal adolescence. They leave home at an early age, move, in Carrie's case, to a foreign country, and there are you know, very few of them that really make it but they all are, are striving for a pro career. And that means endless hours on the bus, traveling from one city to the next and trying as best they can to squeeze in as much homework as they can between all the games and the practices. You're talking hockey, you're sleeping hockey, you're eating hockey. It's our life, it's our job, and I mean, that's, we do it because we enjoy it. But do you ever wonder what else is going on in the world? Uh, no, we're kind of secluded from everything else. I mean, that's, that's part of what we're talking about, I mean, giving up everything else as a teenager. Basically, 
you live a prodigy's life. And, and we all kind of associate prodigies with musical prodigies. And, uh, and where you are one dimensional and you spend all of that time and you're fixated on what you're doing and, and how you're cut off from so many other experiences. And most junior players won't even make it to the NHL. Carey's likely the only one from his team who will. Still, they say, it's worth that one shot, even with all they have to give up. The amount of travel on the bus and just the sleep you get before the game, um, you know, kind of wears and tears in your body as the year goes on. We're on our tight ropes as it is, you know, so we can't go out there and ride motorcycles or go snowboarding like a lot of other people, but then again, we get to play a sport we love. Right. So I guess it's worth the price we pay. It's a strange ritual, but it's what they do to get the adrenaline flowing before each big game. Tonight, it's in Vancouver against the Giants. Three periods, one more victory. Then back on the bus for the 13-hour ride that'll take them to Kelowna and on to Prince George, a mill town best known by the boys on the bus and, of course, by those who live here for the smell. A busload of folks from Williams Lake also made the trip, Carrie's dad among them, to cheer on their local hero. But in the locker room in between periods, a clearly displeased coach Nackbauer tells them they're playing like bums in spite of their one goal lead. You gotta dig deep and you gotta fight it within yourself to bring it forth now in the third period. Because what we're doing right now is just good enough to get by. All right, it comes from the passion, guys. Find it now. If you want to win the game, it's right there for you. And don't succumb to your legs feeling heavy. That's not good enough, guys. You don't become a pro by selling yourself on that. Find a way. That's what we've been doing all along. Find a way. Okay? Kerry to takes work. it to heart because for Kerry, winning, which is what they did tonight, is everything. That's why I play I have half a played a win written on the back of my blocker. I'm extremely competitive. I don't like losing. And if you like losing, it's time to retire. A future NHL star, perhaps. But for now, Kerry Price is still a 19-year-old kid from a remote reserve in northern BC. Still shy, somewhat awkward, and tolerating rather than basking in all the attention that even future stars command. There you go. Thank you very much. I'm getting worn out by the whole process. The phone's been war ringing off the hook, steady, and uh, you feel like you got Mick Jagger in your, uh, in your midst. Not quite like Mick Jagger, but he does have a growing army of fans who are starting to believe what his dad always did. This is a guy that I'm going to rely on for the rest of my career. I mean, he is my backbone. He helps me out a lot through everything. Everything I've learned, I've learned from him. And I can't thank him enough, not just for the commitment he's given me, but all the lessons he's taught me. By the way, Carey Price has won more games this season than any goalie with the Tri-City Americans in the past 10 years.